Welcome to Electrum Online. Now let's talk about the first of the four thermodynamic potentials, the one we're probably most familiar with, which is the internal energy. It's also the one that's most used in physics. So by definition, the internal energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy of a system, for example, of a gas. The kinetic energy is due to the vibrational and translational kinetic energy or motion of the atoms. The potential energy is due to the intermolecular attractive forces, so there's two things at play here. For one, in a gas or any system, the atoms are vibrating, and if it's a gas, the atoms are also moving translationally. Well, that gives those atoms kinetic energy. That kinetic energy added together over the entire system makes up the internal kinetic energy of the system. The potential energy is due to the attractive or repulsive forces between the molecules. Molecules tend to be polar in nature so that different sides of the molecule will either attract or repel the different sides of the other molecules. Those are part of the van der Waals forces as we call them. We ignore those when we deal with an ideal gas, but a non-ideal gas, those forces are there, and when gases are compressed so that molecules are close together, that does play a role. And so that essentially also stores up additional energy. For example, if they are uh, repelling each other and then you compress the gas, well, that builds up additional potential energy within the system that makes up part of the total internal energy. So it's a combination of both kinetic and potential energy inside the system. U, of course, stands for the internal energy increases or decreases with the additional removal of heat. So we use the letter Q for heat. So when we add heat to the system, the internal energy goes up. When we remove heat from the system, the internal energy goes down. The internal energy is used for closed systems. What does that mean, a closed system? A closed system means that there's no exchange of matter, but it still allows the exchange of energy. So in a system where energy is allowed to, to go back and forth, well, for that we use internal energy. Internal energy is also used in the first law of thermodynamics. If you saw the first video in the series, you saw the equation that the change, that little triangle sign there, that's the Greek letter delta, and that means the change in the internal energy of a gas equals the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. So when we add heat, that makes that a positive Q, we get a positive delta U. But if the gas does work that pulls heat out of the gas, that means we'll subtract that from the heat added to the gas to give you the total change in internal energy. Notice that we use the words work done by the gas. Remember Q is heat and W stands for work. The units that we use for internal energy are joules because internal energy, well it's energy and anytime we use energy or work, we use joules. So joules is used for kinetic energy, it's used for potential energy, it's used for work. And so therefore internal energy also uses the unit joules. The internal energy is an extensive property. Ooh, what does that mean, extensive property? Well, either you can measure something or you cannot measure something. The hardness of a substance would not be what we call an extensive property. But the volume of a substance or the length of an object, that can be measured and therefore be called an extensive property. So therefore, U, internal energy, is an extensive property. It answers the question how much, how big, how long, how, vol how voluminous, and so forth. And so therefore, we can actually measure it. Now, we don't measure it directly. We usually measure it through some experiment where we allow a gas to expand and then we, then we see the change in internal energy based upon the results of what happens. Uh, but it's nevertheless a measurable property, so therefore we call it an extensive property. The internal energy is a function of temperature and of temperature only. So U is a function of temperature, and so here we can see that the change in internal energy of a gas is equal to the number of moles of the gas times the specific heat of the gas times the change in the temperature. So it's directly proportional to the change in the temperature. You double the temperature, you double the internal energy. Of course, the temperature needs to be in Kelvin degrees. When the temperature is a constant, delta U will be zero. So if there's no change in the temperature, there will be no change in the internal energy. 
The internal energy cannot be measured directly. So we just mentioned that before. You can't take a ruler and measure the internal energy. You need to do some sort of experiment to extract that information. And finally, the internal energy is the total internal energy of the gas. So usually we use it for gases of the system. And uh, it's the combination of potential and kinetic energy. It's the whole shalada, and shalada, so to speak, is everything that is inside energy-wise, that's the total internal energy of the gas. Now, later on, when we start talking about the other thermodynamic potentials, you see that we sometimes subdivide the energy inside due to other things, other properties, and we'll see the details of that later. But essentially, internal energy is simply what it means. It's the internal energy of a system, primarily of a gas, and that internal energy can be used to do work, for example. And so that is where it's used for, and we use it in the first law of thermodynamics.